king is bold or desperate. Will you engage him personally, Your Highness? Of course. Whoa. Grigor's breath fill your wings. Reform the cohorts. At once. Your Highness. Saboteurs. Their attacks are frequent and widespread, even in the Holy Capital. The Capital? What of my father? Is His he... Radiance is safe. But he has ordered the city guard strengthened. We can expect no reinforcements. That is of no matter. The Emperor's safety is paramount. I shall deal with our enemies here. All of them. These are the big boy icons. It was me. I killed Joshua. Just full of surprises. First that trick with Garuda, then whatever the hell that other thing was. Didn't know you had it in you. Do it. Hey. Kill me. It was me. I killed him. I killed Joshua. I killed them all. I'm a monster! And I deserve to die! So end it! End it now! Please! Please! Ah! I reckon I can take you. If that's what you want. But first... I thought I'd give you the benefit of my timeless wisdom. It seems to me, you see, that since you're still breathing, you might as well make yourself useful. 
Get dressed. Pretty as you are, you're not my type. I'll, uh, see you in the hall. What are you going to do now? Well, well, well. The Wages of Guilt. Quest Lock. There are certain times during the game that side quests have become temporarily unavailable until progress is made through the main scenario. Such times... Okay, sure. <sighs> May as well hear what he has to say. Yeah, so from the end of the prologue, one of the first things I speculated was that he, something happened, he got possessed by Ifrit and he transformed into the icon, brother versus brother, icon battle, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, of course they tried to keep you guessing and it's not like I was absolutely certain, but I think most people could have guessed from the way the prologue ended that Clive obviously had something to do with it. He wasn't just this bystander that watched it all happen. And so the hooded figure obviously was there to throw us off, but the only part of that that confuses me is the cutscene that we saw with Benedicta and the hooded figure and it's like if this hooded figure wasn't real to start with and it was within him all along and blah blah then who the hell did benedict benedict to capture like there's no way they showed us a scene where he was never there in the first place to throw us off like, i think that would be disingenuous storytelling to do that i think that's a bit silly so there's always like a, oh shit like we've have we ever seen them present in a situation where this guy isn't and well we did like with Benedicta, so, um, but I don't know yet. Don't go making me throw you back in there now, eh? But yeah, unfortunately, it was Clive. So where do we even go from here? Yeah, I'm sorry, Torgal. Maybe that's why Torgal didn't greet me with the excitement that I thought. New. So yeah, I think I'll just continue with the story for now. I already revisited this place before that whole episode. But yeah, the, the battle was definitely really cool, I have to say. Um, I kind of much preferred watching it, I would say. It's one of those, like, it, when it works, it's really nice. It's like, the, there's some really satisfying elements to it. Uh, when you do the iconic battle and you're into it and it's epic and stuff. But um, you have pretty limited options anyway. Um, and it's obviously never going to be quite as smooth and as, and as cinematic as just watching a really cool FMV of them fight. But obviously, you know, the, they have to involve you in that as well. So it was good. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And the music was really nice. And thankfully, the frame rate and stuff held up too. Uh, there wasn't any kind of um, struggle or issue with that too. So it was like a nice smooth battle. I do wish I was a little bit better, but it's the first one. I wasn't even expecting it. So at least we got through it. So... What happens now? Finally crawled out of the crypt, eh? You look like it. Although I thank you for doing us the courtesy of covering up. Don't. Well, oh, still have a bit of fight left in you? Then listen. I've arranged a meeting with Gav. In case you've forgotten, you're the one who's been putting his nose to work for. For nothing. Just listen. While you've been relaxing in your cell, Gav's been busy sniffing out your dominance. And according to his last report, he's picked up a scent. Gav's gone to a fair bit of trouble for you. The least you can do is hear the poor bugger out. He's going to meet us at the King's Fall. Pack your stuff. We'll leave as soon as you're ready. Okay, so that adds a bit to the confusion even more so, because, well, Clive is a dominant of Ifrit now, right? But there's another, so the guy, the hooded figure is real. And we're still on the hunt for him and he has some fire kind of ability. So 
Another thing we speculated very early on was that is Joshua still alive? Now, how can the hooded figure and Joshua appear at the same time? Obviously, that's a whole different question. Um, maybe the hooded figure that we see now versus the hooded figure that we saw in the flashback is not the same uh, person. They look the same, but they're not the same. Who the hell knows? So there's still a, a, a lot of things to put together, but there was just no way that that scene with the hooded figure was completely thrown in to, to, to throw us off like that. I don't think they would ever pull a, a storytelling move that cheap. So, yeah, the whole, like, you know, it was Clive, he became Ifrit and killed his brother. Um, at least we think he killed his brother. All of that stuff's legit. But this hooded figure is also real. So we've got Joshua, who is the dominant of the Phoenix, who is dead. And then we've got Clive, who's a dominant of Ifrit, who's the second fire. And then now we've got this hooded figure as well, who's also got some fiery stuff going on. And we think they're a dominant. So it, it's getting a bit confusing, but we'll have to, to see how things go. Now, we have a Moogle here. Can we interact with the Moogle? No! Moogly! It's very cute. <laughs> oh. You look like someone's shit in your shoes. Well, whatever's wrong with you. Keep your chin up, eh? Stops you drowning. Thanks for that. Um, let me speak to Machen. <laughs> you don't answer. Uh, he's still stuck on the dung. You need to move on, mate. Good day. Or is it night? It can be. Okay. Quite the find for you today. Hmm. Okay. The dating system used throughout the twins, which marks the years of the realm, have passed since the signing of the Continental Accord some 800 years ago. In centuries since, nations have risen and fallen, and the concord between them has faltered, but the calendar persists. Battle of the Twin Realms. The Battle of the Twin Realms was a conflict fought between the Holy Empire of Sambrek and the Kingdom of Walud in the year 865. Sambrekwa, Sam, I don't know how to pronounce that stuff, Sambrekwa, I think, forces, with the power of the icon Bahamut on their side, took the Strait of Ulthar back from Walud, putting an end to a blockade that had lasted several decades. The Walud, as looking to hold back the Sambrekwa advance by any means necessary, formed an alliance with the Dalmechian Republic who themselves are waging war against the Iron Kingdom on the Western Front and prevented the Empire from progressing any further. Now, there's always going to be a bit of like complicated these guys fighting that guy and trying to keep track of who's on whose side and, and all that stuff. That's why, personally, just again as like a preference thing, I'm not as into these like stories about like the sort of kingdoms and warring factions and all that kind of stuff again game of thrones was a bit of an exception to that stuff game of thrones i felt like was much more about the personal relationships and stuff going on and this game is not exactly like a i don't think having a mastery of all of the realms and every single war that's going on in battle is essential but obviously it it, it does help to to kind of have a look and study that kind of stuff if you can as well the Battle of Belnius Tor was a conflict fought between the Holy Empire of Sambrek and the Kingdom of Walud in 873. Having lost vital territory to Sambrekwa forces eight years earlier in the Battle of the Twin Realms, the Waluders launched an assault on the eponymous peak, looking to regain a foothold in the Imperial lands on the opposite side, the Strait of Ulthar. Both sides fielded their icons, and in the ensuing showdown between Odin and Bahamut, the entire Sambrekwa legion was lost, and the Waluders regained their outpost on Storm. Okay. Yeah, Dominant of Odin and Warden of Darkness. So yeah, Do Odin is the Icon of Darkness. So we still have no word on the uh, Icon of Water. S should be Leviathan, of course. Okay, dating back to antiquity, the term Egi, Egis, to Aegis or Egis? I want to say Aegis, I'm going to say Egi. Um, has historically been used to describe those ethereal entities that can be conjured by dominance. EGs are capable of casting potent magics corresponding to the elemental alignment of their creators. Though unquestionably formidable, they will fade immediately should the dominant who gave them being happen to be slain. Right, at this stage we've got yeah, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Oh, so we do have eight. Sorry, my bad. There is no... They mentioned water, though, no? I swear it was literally listed as one of, like, the... Each one represents an element. So who is this guy? That's got to be a le Leviathan or something. I don't know. Whatever. Let's check. Yeah. A fire expected icon that first emerged in the year of the realm 860 when Imperial forces attacked the Rosarian stronghold of Phoenix Gate. Clad in infernal flame, the fiendish creature flung itself against the Phoenix, overpowering the icon with a strength and ferocity never seen before. Its reappearance was to usher in a second shocking revelation that its dominant was none other than Clive Rosfield. Um, the Warden of Fire, last seen on the night of the Imperial invasion of Phoenix Gate in the year 860, when the young Joshua Rosfield lost control of his powers, the Phoenix first awakened among the moats of fire, an ancient tribe who dwelled in the western reaches of the storm, of storm, and the careful preservation of bloodlines among the Rosarian nobility ensured that this dominant would always be born in the Ducal line. The Warden of Fire. I mean, it does say last seen on the night of the Imperial invasion. Surely, hooded figure's got to be Joshua. I mean, come on. Obviously, then why did we see a hooded figure there? But that hooded figure might... That one might have been Clive's imagination, I, I guess. I don't know. But surely. Uh, the act of a dominant transforming their living flesh into that of their icon is priming. Dominance most often prime during times of war, using immense strengths of their icons to turn the tides of battle. Though it is usually done deliberately, the dominant remaining in control of the icon even when primed, on occasion a dominant will lose control of their powers and see their icon run riot. And then this is like the semi-form, okay. Cool. So it's definitely nice to just to keep track of things here. I am uh, enjoying this. Just depends how, how important this stuff is for you. I want to see what they say. Um, losing control of his icon. From the flames rose a second icon of fire whose murderous rampage laid both the castle and the phoenix low. Bit of a weird way to say it, but okay. Yeah, I think for now I'm good. I don't want to read about anything else at this stage. And we have the bestiary, which I like. But yeah, here, this this gap that we have is interesting to me. Did you learn everything you needed? I think so. I think so. <laughs> I'm as obsessed with duck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't need any of that. Uh, let's have a look here again. What you got? Yes. What? Go on then. Um. Ah, okay, this is new. So once again, I can either just buy this, or I can kind of end up crafting one instead. Battle chains. Ah, nice. Reduces Rook's Gambit cooldown. Yeah, this is definitely like a bit more God of War vibes. And we don't have any new items yet. Oh. Of when we're done. I see I'm busy here. So, what it be? Ooh, what is this? Sheesh. Yeah, I think we'll take that. No scratches, all right? Give me that. So, can I reinforce? No. So I can't reinforce it, but it, it is still more powerful than what I have already. Um, so, okay. Else? I think I can't craft um, this thing this time. And what do you want? Go on, then. Yeah, this I can't do, so... You'll not find a better price than that. I mean, I think there's no reason not to sell this. I'm be thankful you got that much. Finished, are you? And then I just want to see if I can upgrade it, and then we are done. Well, so what it be? 
No, I can't reinforce it. I guess it's like a different tier of stuff. Yeah, it would have given me two more HP, to be honest. Uh, I'll leave it for Anything now. else? Okay. What I do want to do... Um, okay, it doesn't tell you anything else. So spurred by her cries, did wind become storm. Okay. I think that's that. Um... Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about the orchestrian thing right now. Boy. Can't pet him in here. He's not impressed with me after after seeing my different moves. Are you alright now, Clive? You're not going to go mad again, are you? <laughs> Something tells me you probably will. Let's go, man. Let's get out of here. Journey to King's Fall. Mysterious hooded man. So there hasn't been much side questing. That's one thing I've been surprised by. I mean, it's at this stage, prologue took about two and a half hours. I played another three, three and a half hours. Yeah, it's been about seven or eight hours and we don't have that much side quests. And we've done two little tiny silly little quests and that's been it. So they really want to keep you on the storyline path for now. Uh, Sambrek, here tumble the waters of the Empire's brooks and bournes to converge into a single resplendent cataract where a bygone king is said to have lost both life and kingdom. So flowery with the language. Not so long ago, this here was a thriving trade route. Then the blight came. The people left. And just like that, it was deserted. Making it the perfect little shortcut. Gab's waiting for us up ahead. Come on. Still feeling sorry for yourself? Please, think about it, Clive. The rumours all point to... That was an Imperial signal. They shouldn't be here. The old fort's been abandoned for years. Our little chat can wait. I need to see what the bastards are up to. You go on ahead and meet up with Gav. But we both know that... No buts about it. So it seems to me like the next part of the narrative is, is the hooded guy, who is the hooded guy, and could it be Joshua? Fetch! Surely to fetch you've got to throw, huh? This is stupid. I'm the dominant of fire. We sent Galv on a wild goose chase. This music is glorious. Yeah, for me, always with soundtracks, this kind of stuff is the stuff that I, I personally just vibe with more, usually. As much as I love like the big orchestral, impressive pieces in like the big battles and stuff, to me, just like walking around Final Fantasy games and listening to these tracks, that's that's the magic for me. That's where the real magic is. And this sword looks really, really cool, I have to say. I almost don't want to fight anything, I just want to walk around for like 10 minutes. But we've got to do it. More killing. And for what? Let's kill them all. Sit 
I got to not get overwhelmed here. You know what to do, boy. Get the wall you got, boy. That's enough. Don't let them get away. Stay down. But yeah, still, I mean, everything I'm seeing so far continues to to show me quality. I mean, again, the the environments, like the quality of the environments, the music, uh, the voice acting, the performances, everything. Still, I'm really enjoying the game so far. It's good stuff. And again, I've, we've had more companionship than I expected. I mean, basically, Sid, ever since we've met him, he's been with us pretty much the entire way. Like, yes, he's, he's veered off at this particular bit, but in general... Clive hasn't been alone, which has been nice. To me, like, okay, we don't have a conventional party, but you've got to have some kind of camaraderie and friendship and, uh, and stuff like that. Not now. It's so important in the, in the journey, always. Ah! Okay. That is a big boy. Beast man. You know what to do, boy. Give them all you've got, boy. Yeah, I tried to launch that get and then away. get away, but that was not enough. You know what to do, boy. Get him. Sick of toggle. Yeah, we're gonna give him a deadly takedown here. Give him one of those. Get him. Yeah, you do that. We're starting to do nice magic him, damage boy. here too. There it is. You know what to do, boy. Give him all you've got, boy. Get him. It's going to take more than that, though. Get down here, boy. Okay, we've had a good run at it so far, but it is easy to screw up as well, so I'm trying not to take it for granted here. Yeah, I mean, by the time he even gets up, you've already kind of done a bunch of damage, so it's nice. So you can see the pan forming here. It's like you can really help the stagger with these as well while he's down. So you can start to put together a nice little rhythm. Oh man, I was just about to end the battle with like basically almost perfect dodging. I had six nice perfect dodges in a row and I messed up. But hey, I think that's probably one of my slickest battles, I think, so far. Nice.